Hey guys, it's me, Hazebro2 here, back with another video, and in today's video, I am going to be showing you how to set up and use Voice Meter Potato correctly. Now, of course, to use Voice Meter Potato correctly, you're going to need to install Voice Meter Potato. And one other thing, which is virtual audio cable. The links will be in the description to both of these. I would recommend installing Voice Meter Potato first because sometimes virtual audio cable will bundle in voice meter normal with it and you want to be using voice meter potato. Anyway, to show you how to set it up, let's get over to the setup. Okay, so we are over at the setup now and it looks complicated, I know. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is go up here and these will all say hardware input. This here is split up into three sections. You have your hardware inputs, your virtual inputs, and your outputs, and here is the physical outputs and virtual outputs. This bit up here doesn't actually matter, it's for recording, however I would recommend using another program such as Audacity. Up here, you will want to press on just anywhere here, and change it to either to what your microphone is, so where you have it plugged in, or it will just say your microphone. And the bit at the start is a different driver. This works the best for me. If you sound a bit robotic with one, switch to the other. Another thing that you might want to do is right click and change this to say mic, and then enter. So that's basically all of this stuff that you'll need for this column. And uh, let's just get onto the contents of it. So the first thing that you'll see here is this, and I'm not really sure what this is, but it can boost the highs of your voice, it can boost the lows of your voice, it can give you some echoes and brightness and hot mids, it's, it's weird. But what I would recommend doing with this is putting it around here. This is future Hazebro 2 here. I forgot to mention it at the time, but you can actually right click this and you get some weird modulation stuff, uh, it's a bit weird. And um, if you right click it again, you get this 3D panel. So this is for if you have two microphones and you're trying to do some like ASMR kind of thing, you can go over to the right and then the left. So you'd have this one set to left, and then you'd have the one over here set to right, and you'd speak into the one on the right and then the one on the left. And so it'd sound a bit like, hello. Yeah. And you can also move it up, so that's there, down, so that's kind of, there's quite a bit of it, so I'd recommend if you are trying to do something like that, putting it about here, so that it does feel very like that, however, there is a definitive, you're speaking into one ear and it's not blocking it completely out in the other ear, uh, so there's it on the right ear, and um, let's put this back to normal because I don't have two microphones. <laughs> The next thing that you're going to want to do is put this here where it says comp. So this is compression. And uh, as I turn this up, you will notice my voice gets louder. Now, this just happens. It's what happens because it is taking the lowest points of your voice and the highest points of your voice and squishing them together so that it works better for broadcasting. And this here is a noise gate. So what a noise gate does is it allows you to, it basically makes the channel and that microphone stop picking up anything if you go below a certain point. So I'd say that having this on about 2.5-ish works fairly well. And it cuts out, so say you have an air conditioning unit above you, it cuts that out. Special effects and external effects are things that you can control up here. There are lots of other tutorials on them. I don't really want to get into that today because I don't think that it's all that important. Now, what you're seeing here is the microphone volume. So I can slide this up and my microphone gets louder and I can slide it down. And, my and I would say that literally have this wherever you want it. It's on a slider. You can also right click it to set it to a specific value. I normally have mine on six. Getting on to other things, this here where it says other will say hardware input two. I have it on other 
it can literally be anything. I've just got these all as unused because I don't use them. The big bit that you'll want to get into is over here, and this is your virtual inputs. So on voice mid potato here, you have your virtual inputs, and these are very, very important. And you will be using it a bit like a GoXLR, but it's on your computer. So it's a bit of a routing table. So over here, we have your mic. And then on system VIO, I would recommend that you go into sound settings and change your default playback device to VB Audio Voice Meter VIO, not VIO 3 or AUX, just VIO. And that means that anything that comes in will go through here. However, you may want to have your music separated. And for this, you are going to want to go into the settings, sound settings specifically, and scroll down here. Press app volume default preferences. And you, by default, have it on via. However, and the output, the input doesn't really matter for the moment anyway. So what you will want to do is set system sounds to default. And that is everything. However, Discord, you will need to have Discord open for it to happen. You may want to send to what I have here as chat. So send this to VIO3 and via 3 and you can see up here what it is what you need to send it to so i also want to send my music so i also want to send my music through and i use windows media player so it might not appear at first on here so then you just have to start playing some music and obviously i can hear it however you can't because on this recording tab i don't have music plugged in so what you would want to do is set this to aux via because aux is this one in the middle and so if i'm playing music it gets sent through this middle one if i just open up discord and make uh sounds eg muting and unmuting you can see that it's going on this fader here and if i make a system sound eg and if I make a system sound, e.g., you can see that it comes through on this one, and you will hear system sound. So, what you will want to do is go through and say you use Chrome for your music or Spotify, root that to there. And obviously, if you want to rename it, just right-click, rename it to music. You don't have to have it in this order, that's just what I have. Anyway, we are now going to go on to the outputs section over here. So, the output section is the fairly complicated bit, actually. This is the bit that you are going to want to do quite a bit with. So, as you can see over here, you have A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, B1, B2, B3. These say which one it will be pushed over to. And say you want to have it put over to A1, select A1. However, I would recommend routing all of this, and if you like your, to hear your microphone in your own ears, then turn this on, because then it sends it back through to here. I really can't talk properly when I have that on, so I'm just going to turn it off. It really distracts me hearing my own voice in my ears. So, route all of these into A1, and then select A1 as your sound or whatever your speak it's your headphones, I don't know what it says for you, but whatever it, your default playback device was before you changed it to that. The next thing that you're going to want to do is route the system sounds to B1, the music, the first column to B1, the second column to B2, and the third column to B3. So if I'm playing my music, it is being routed into my ears via A1. However, if I had music on on this recording tab, you guys would be able to hear it through B2. So A1 is kind of what you are going to hear, and B2 is what 
the people that you're broadcasting it to will be able to hear. So B1 is your system sounds, things like that, and that goes through there. It, B2 it will be your music sounds, and that sends it through here, and your Discord or TeamSpeak, if you're one of the people that still uses TeamSpeak, will be sent through B3. And I would recommend setting your microphone to A5 so that you have them all in one place, and go up here into A5 and do KS VB audio point cable that we installed at the very beginning and so this is where your microphone is being sent out of however you may notice that i have this blue tab here ticked and if i turn it off then my voice will sound very different and i'm going to show you how to set this up properly so to set up your eq properly this is a very important thing so i would recommend setting up eq you are going to want to right click on it and you have six bands of EQ. And the settings that I would recommend, obviously all of these are right clickable. So I would recommend starting off with the first one being at 150 hertz, 5.5 .5 decibels, and 17.3. This one being at 13, this one being at 7.4, 9, 8.2. This one at three. Keep all of these up at the top except for this last one where I would recommend having it on this bottom flat one not that one there and it's very simple for if you want to change it because you just go up and down so that's down and that's up and you can tell that my voice will sound different now so let's just put that back to where it was and these are just something to start with however obviously you will want to change these at some point so i'll give you a very good default one here this is fairly standard and you can tweak it to make your voice sound perfect and then you just left click and then it goes blue which means that your equalizer is working properly the final thing is making sure that you hear everything properly and uh, this is slightly more complicated so what you will need to do is go into sound settings and scroll down to the bottom onto advanced sound options and change your default output device so basically this stuff here you will want to have this as voice meter via as well have these two be the same this one will be output this one is input it really doesn't matter all too much what they are however they do need to be the same and as I've recommended, having system on via makes the most sense. And uh, to make sure that it's out all outputting to you, make sure that it's all on A1. It, your microphone can be, however, I personally just don't like hearing my microphone back into my own voice. Nobody will hear what you hear on A1. They will choose what you choose them to hear. So A5 via the virtual audio cable or via these three if you're using OBS. So... Let's bring up Discord and I'll show you how to set it up for that. So here is Discord. We're on the Hazebro 2 Discord server, link in the description. If you want to join, I can help you out setting it, this up. And this doesn't matter. You're looking up here at input device. Change this to input device, virtual voice meter output, VB audio cable, virtual cable. It might say something slightly different. It gets a bit messed up sometimes. And then output device, set that to default because it should be the same as that one. Now, jumping on to the final thing, if you want to set this up for OBS, what you're going to want to do is have your microphone, right click, it will say mic slash aux. You can rename it, right click it, press properties, and then set it to VB audio cable as we did in Discord settings. For music, you will want to right-click properties and set it to whatever your music was. So for me, it was the Ox via one. And for system, you will want to set it to whatever your system was. So mine was just via. And for chat, you will want to set it to 
whatever your chat was and mine was mine was vio 3 and you may be wondering oh how do i get the chat and the system and the music sliders to be separate from system like i normally had it so what you will want to do and that is a very good question because it isn't that intuitive i mean I might even end up doing an OBS tutorial just because of how not intuitive it is. However, it is a great software for anybody to be using. You'll want to press on Audio Input Capture. Name it to whatever you want. So I will add existing chat. And then you will get one. And then it will instantly come into your audio mixer. And you can go Properties and put it there. And you can always rename it if you don't like what you named it. And I'm just going to go and remove this. Anyway, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure that you leave a like, comment if you have any problems. And if you want me to make the OBS tutorial, also comment that. And subscribe so that you don't miss it if I do end up making it. Anyway, I really do hope that you enjoyed this. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.